Someone is asking, uh, how can I feel Prophet Muhammad's presence when meditating and contemplating? How can I feel Prophet presence when meditating, contemplating? Asked and answered inshaAllah, so they, they got the full <laughs> 20 minute answer on that one. Um, yes Sayyidi, forgive me, how can we remove victim consciousness from our life through spirituality? How can we remove victim consciousness? Yeah. If we've been victimized in life? Yeah, the, the, again that has to do with those talks that we have of the past and the future. That these two ropes that bind us or grind us and hold us from shaitan has to do what happened in our past and our fear of what's coming in the future. And shaitan's all about emphasizing the past, what was done to us, how this happened, why it happened, why my, my family did this, why my relative did this, why my, my spouse did this, why my, my boss did this, everything about the past. Tariqa comes and teaches Islam to submit and the greatest part of submission is to believe in destiny and that whatever we are Allah has destined that. Allah wrote whatever He wrote and nothing could have happened to us that Allah has not written. Means that nothing happened by accident and, and Allah didn't know. So part of our submission because it's a whole package. The submission is, Ya Rabbi whatever you wrote for me, I'm trying my best to submit to it. Why it happened to me only you know, it's hikmah, it's wisdom, it's cleansing, it's reality. It's not for me to ask Allah why because I'm not at that level of belief but it's for me just to taslim, to submit. They are a be that your will is supreme and I try my best in life to submit, alhamdulillah wa shukran dillah, alhamdulillah wa shukran dillah. And then we spend a lifetime in practicing how not to think about why it happened. You think about all the issues of it happening, happening, happening and you wash your heart from why it happened. Why it happened is exactly what Allah wanted. Later in life if we gain through our meditation and our practices a sense of hikmah. When Allah says He grants ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin and whom He granted wisdoms and knowledges is the greatest gift of all because through that ocean of hikmah they can reflect and understand a wisdom of why Allah puts us through what He puts us through. Every difficulty has a wisdom, every experience had a wisdom, one so that we understood it Many whom faced abuse, if they regain themselves, fix themselves, overcome these difficulties, they are used to people whom have been abused. Because never is a warner sent to someone whom has no experience from that reality. So Allah put us through many realities in dunya so that we could face the people of dunya. He doesn't send somebody who has no experience with Eskimos, has no understanding of ice and then send them, go do dawah to Eskimos. You have nothing to do with them, you say, how you built this even this house from ice and I don't like fish. <laughs> so means from everyone he brings somebody from them. So everyone who's been abused one day if you gain yourself and, and strengthen yourself and fix yourself out of these difficulties with Allah just guidance then you can be of an immense benefit to all those who are under continuous abuse, under continuous difficulty, under continuous different vices that are gripping and, and, and holding their lives. That's why so many of these programs for drug addicts and drinking addicts and alcoholism are successful from the ones whom fix themselves from those difficulties. So when they go to those 12-step meetings they're talking to people whom have fixed themselves from that difficulty. As a result they keep a companionship with them and then they're guided through how not to do those things. So you keep the fellowship of people who are trying to improve themselves. Same with abuse groups.
They sit with people and they talk that, okay, you're not the only one who was abused, all of them have been abused and they talk about how they're coping and how they came over and got over that difficulty. So many, many wisdoms and why Allah has whatever written in our lives and why it was written that way. But the most important is how to overcome it, to become strengthened by it and then on one day to be of service with it. Then imagine all the hasanat and blessings that come to a servant that can go out now and reach to people in difficulty and take them out of that difficulty inshaAllah. And that's the concept of the shaykhs that they Allah guide them, lifted them, took them through all their experiences in life and now ask them that, do you want to die? You know in their khalwa they, they have an ability to die. That they reach to such a level in which they can ask, Ya Rabbi I'm ready to go. I think I achieved everything and I'm content at where I reached. And Allah offers to them that, go but this isn't really the way. If you want to go now then you, you did all of this for what? But the greatest, the greatest way of Sayyidina Muhammad is live a life of service. Why you don't go back and now serve? with what we've bestowed upon you was not to be wasted and go to the grave, go back now and serve the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad So alhamdulillah inshaAllah Allah give strength to people to be uplifted from their difficulties, sadnesses, oppressions and to improve themselves to one day to be of service to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Can jinn attach themselves to stones, example rings? Can jinn attach themselves to stones, example rings? A jinn can go into anything, they are of a subtle nature. They can go into stones, that's why a lot of these people who, who put crystals and, and uh, heebie jeebie stuffs, yes. They can accompany those items and occupy the space of that item. They can be in trees, they can be in a sheet, they can be in anything. You can get a fabric from somebody and the fabric has, uh, has something on it. So yes, that's why we don't buy from new age people crystals that have readings on them or this has a blessing on it. There, everything has to be through our Islamic sources and, and du'as from those whom we trust in their actions and in their deeds inshaAllah. O Honourable Shaykh, how can one tell which voices from beyond are beneficial and which are harmful? Walaykum As Salaam, how can we tell which voices from beyond are beneficial or harmful? I think we talked about that the, the week before, don't listen to any voices from beyond. <laughs> You're not to interact with anything that you cannot see. And don't interact with even the people you see. <laughs> Remember going to a mosque, you know, think of this world as you go to a mosque and do you think that like if 10 people in the masjid come up to you that because you're in a mosque everything is going to be good or no, that's the place of immense fitna. A lot of crazy people enter into the masjid and they come to bother you and they'll bother and disrupt your whole life. So it doesn't mean any location or, or anything is of any safety, shaitan entered into paradise to make Sayyidina Adam fall. So especially in dealing with unseen, the quality of unseen mu'min being, they are forbidden to interact with any human except the shaykhs. So for you to understand a mu'min whom is a part of tariqah and has given their allegiance to Prophet and they reach their covenant, they are completely forbidden to interact with human beings. This is their covenant with Allah So any being that somebody is interacting with it's not of that nature. So then it's like a strange person in the mosque if they're Muslim and since you can't see them you won't even know if they're Muslim. And it could be a shaitan, it could be a nefarious being. So there is no interaction with them. When we talk about jinn and the du'as and all, this is from the level of shaykhs that this du'a is for this, this interaction is for this, this taweez has these blessings but it's not meant for a common person to try to interact with that world. There's no permission at all and anything of a higher nature has no permission to interact with humans at all.
that's their covenant with Allah As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Sayyidi Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullah Thank you for all the life-saving guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Could you please you. give us… Thank you for your guidance. Could you please give us women advice on how to be great spouses? Advice on how to be a great spouse, inshaAllah. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's for women or for men but to live a life of, of sacrifice. Live a life of, of compromise and in which it's a give and take. So that becomes the hardest struggle in life and that the path is of a similar nature at least makes it easier. If everyone is trying to reach to Allah's satisfaction and especially if they're in tariqah that they're trying to also reach the realities of the tariqah makes everything to be easier. If that's not the situation then it's going to be a life of continuous you know compromising and, and, and trying to make somebody to be satisfied. So it's a, it's a like a, a great struggle on how to struggle against oneself, how to, to put oneself down and how to realize who is spiritually more advanced. Whoever is spiritually more advanced has to take the role of a fireman in which he's trained or she's trained to continuously try to put out the fire of the nafs, the fire of anger, the fire of, of everything that shaitan is trying to do and that requires then a tremendous amount of training. That's why then the one who's in tariqah then should be doing their muraqabah, doing their zikrs, doing their salawats. Because you know the buttons are going to be pressed and the buttons through family are the most difficult. To be tested by somebody at work is okay a little bit hard but tested by the postman absolutely not hard. But by tested at home everybody has a launch button. This one talks and then the rockets are launched. This one talks the rockets are launched. This one so it's a complete bombardment in the home and everything is a trigger so it becomes this is the great struggle when Prophet was describing that the fight outside is one thing but now we're going to the great jihad and the great jihad was the fight inside. This is a part of that system that the fight inside is not just me battling whether I'm going to eat french fries or not tonight but how I'm going to put down fire and anger and aggression from everything around me. How I keep my wudu when the other person is yelling and screaming. When somebody's angry and yelling and you say, Ufa abudu amri inna Allah, inna Allah basirun bi libad. Ya Rabbi you barely, you see my condition, look, look at what I'm going through. So all of these are the tools in which the believer has to use through that battle on how to stay quiet, how to keep wudu, how to make their zikrs, how to make their salawats. And it becomes more and more difficult in last days because of the immensity of negative energies. The immensity of shayateen now that are just in the air and not only in the air but because of these sicknesses now are inside of people. They've taken and nested inside of people and now these people become more and more walking shayateen with so much aggression, so much anger, so much rage. So Allah save us and give us strength inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum dear Sayyidi, uh, how do you keep people out of your heart? How do you keep people out of your heart? Yeah. Means that the building the relationship when they teach like that it's that you should be building the relationship of love with Allah and love for Sayyidina Muhammad But people are too busy trying to build the love with one another that they forgot about the love of Allah and they forgot the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So tariqah comes to pull that cord out and reapply it in the right direction that your love should be for Allah and that he's your protector, he's the guide, he's the, the, the one that we have to please in life is Allah. Not the spouse only but we have to please Allah Then the love for Sayyidina Muhammad that my love and my allegiance is to Sayyidina Muhammad 
At that time then everybody should know their position that you don't come before Allah and you don't come before Sayyidina Muhammad That has its own struggle. When people know who you are and know that your love is for Allah love for Sayyidina Muhammad then every other relationship has its place and the correct understanding. But when somebody is not trained in like that, they want to find the love of Allah in other people. And then as soon as they meet people they want to change them so that they can mold them and change them into a different… And shaykhs know that you cannot change anyone. If the shaykhs can't change people, you definitely can't. So people don't change, only thing going to change is your interacting with them and your understanding of somebody and you'll, you'll modify your approach on how you deal with them. But people don't change and rarely Allah will make somebody to change. So it's not that we come across people, make them change and then this is the way I want to have this love and you're like going to be a God for me, astaghfirullah. So once we have the supreme love with Allah everybody else then takes their position and they love to the extent that they can love and you love them to the extent that you can love them. But the supreme love is with Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad InshaAllah. Um, as Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. When doing meditation with the rose quartz, which hand do you hold it in, please? InshaAllah, that is on the study of the hands. You can hold it on either hand right now to spark your light for your energy, and when you're feeling that energy. Then later on you can read the articles on the hand and the importance of the hand. That your left hand shafi is fire, your right hand kafi is a coolness and, and like a rahmah. So you have to burn with left and rain with the right like a rahmah. So you burn away a badness with your left hand and with the coolness you rejuvenate something with your right hand. So if you feel there's some sort of a, a, a negativity or, or, or you want to you know crack through and it's not cracking through, you can hold with the left hand and bring that energy and like a fire will begin to come from your left hand, a very heated fire. And with that hand then you can push away and clean whatever is of a negative nature. Once the energy starts to come from the right hand, it's of a cool light in which it can bring the rahmah and like a rain. So you have to burn something away and then you rain upon it from a mercy to bring it back to its, its, its goodness. So fiery is left and coolness is right, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ili Sharif Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alayhi wa sallam kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyyatan aliyya wa sayru wa saddatina wa siddiqina al-fatiha.